Hey guys, Scott from Maximoy again. Uh, just wanted to do another tech talk, this time about shock absorbers. During our weekly tech training, we discovered that there's a lot of bad information out there about shocks. So we kind of wanted to bring it in and simplify it a little bit. Maybe help you figure out what the differences are and why you might choose one shock over another. So um, basically there's three different kinds of shocks that are commonly used on our Jeeps or our off-road vehicles. And, and the basic shock that's gonna be like a stock shock or um, an entry level replacement uh, for a lift kit. It's gonna be a twin tube shock. Um, the twin tube shock uses mostly hydraulic oil. It might have a little bit of pressure in it. It might have a little bit of gas charge about up to 100 PSI. Um, the next shock that we would use would be what's called a mono tube shock. Uh, now this mono tube shock um, is exactly what it sounds like. There's one tube, uh, holds the oil, it holds the nitrogen charge, with an internal floating piston that separates them. Uh, now this shock's gonna have about 200 PSI of nitrogen charge. Uh, then the other common shock is gonna be your reservoir shock, which is almost exactly the same as the monotube. It's just that uh, we've got some more room to put some more oil, we've got some more room to put nitrogen, it'll run a little bit cooler. Um, extended performance is really where that shock is gonna shine. Now, back to the twin tube shock. The way this shock works, um, basically you've got the shock body. Inside that shock body, and the reason that it's called a twin tube shock is we actually have two pistons in this thing. So we have an internal piston. Now this is actually where the shock seal, which is on the end of the shaft here, this is actually where it pushes. Now if you look, You'll notice this thing's like about an inch in diameter where our entire shock body is about double that. So really, in terms of piston, we're only using about half of the body of the shock. Now, the way this thing works is we fill this with oil and this piston slides up and down. We've got some valves that sit down inside the uh, bottom of the shock. Those valves control the amount of oil now this piston goes into here, and then there'll be a gas charge on the outside uh, between the two cylinders. Now, this shock's going to give us a pretty nice ride quality. It's pretty low pressure in there, about 100 PSI on a gas charge shock. Um, as the fluid passes out through these valves, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to push into the outside of the shock and displace it. Uh, this gives us decent ride quality, but we've got two problems. One is that the gas charge itself is pretty light. Two is that we're mixing the gas and the oil. While you're driving down the road, going to the grocery store on a nice, flat, maintained road, that's probably great. Uh, where our problem is going to come in is that we're usually not driving on that. We're driving over washboard. We're driving over dips, potholes, things like that. When this shock moves back and forth and mixes that air and the oil, or the nitrogen and the oil, what'll happen is it'll aerate. Once it aerates, it loses its ability uh, to create pressure. And then we start losing, or we suffer from what's called shock fade. So this is a pretty inexpensive shock to make. Um, it has a pretty soft ride quality. It is always gonna be static. And by static, I mean that it doesn't adjust to our road quality or uh, the type of driving that we're doing at that moment. So um, if you're gonna drive the same way and you're gonna drive on some pretty decent roads and you kinda like that feel of a Buick, this might be the shock for you. For those of us that want a little additional shock ability or, or dampening ability, we're gonna go to a mono tube shock. Now, the way the mono tube works <clears throat> is very similar. We've got oil charging. Um, main difference is gonna be our valving is gonna be on this end of the shock. Now, at, underneath the uh, piston on the shaft, we have our internal floating piston. Now, you're gonna hear all the different shock manufacturers brag about how they're using this 2.0 IFP series. Reality is all monotube shocks are gonna use an internal floating piston because that's how they're designed. This internal floating piston has a rubber O-ring seal 
looks about like this. This is going to separate the oil and the gas. Those two things are never going to mix, and that's going to keep it from aerating, which is great because what we can do is we can move the shock in and out as much as we want, but we're never actually going to aerate the fluid. And I think that that's a nice, uh, nice addition on those washboard roads or off-road or anything that's high speed. Now we're going to have a considerably higher charge in here. We're going to have about 200 psi of nitrogen. Uh, the good part of that uh, is it's going to help us. It's going to give us more control. The bad part of that is it's going to give us more feel. So you're going to have a little firmer ride quality um, with this style of shock. And that's going to be a good thing, especially when you're making invasive maneuvers or trying to do something unexpected. The other nice thing about this style of shock is that it's going to give you some re roll resistance around turns. So it's actually going to make the vehicle handle a little bit better. A few more things of notice. Um, the piston is extremely larger. If we compare it to the twin tube shock, Look at the size difference in the pistons. They're not even close. We're getting a lot more shock dampening with a monotube shock. We're able to use the entire body of the shock as the piston. So we're actually getting more travel, we're getting more oil, we're getting more nitrogen. Uh, we can get more shock in less of a package. Um, this is a lot more expensive to manufacture this level of shock, so the price is gonna go up a little bit. The advantage to the monotube shock is that we're going to have better dampening ability. And while that may not translate into a softer, more comfortable ride, what it does translate into is the tires touching the ground more consistently over bumps. This means more control, so that gives you safety. And that's a really important feature, especially in a dual purpose vehicle. Now, um, the next upgrade from that is going to be a reservoir shock. Now, what we have with the reservoir shock is pretty much the same thing, where we've got the model tube design, just exactly like the regular model tube. The difference is, is that we use a line and we move an additional reservoir that we can mount remotely or we can attach it to the shock like this. Now, inside of this, we have our internal floating piston and we have our gas charge. Now, the advantage that we're going to get with a remote reservoir shock is we're going to be able to fit a lot more shock oil into this system and we're going to be able to fit more nitrogen. When we increase the content of these, we can control things like heat and we can reduce shock cavitation. What that means is, is premium performance for an extended period, even in the worst conditions. So if you're flying across the desert or you're doing a gravel road and you're in a hurry, when you start hitting the chatter on the road and the tires start bouncing like mad, this is going to hold up. It's not going to get hot. You're not going to get shock fade. This is a definite upgrade when you compare it to the other two. Um, other than that, that's pretty much all I've got on shocks today. Again, we've got the twin tube. We've got oil and gas mixed together with the charge to help control aeration. Problem here, when you move it too fast, it aerates the oil. You lose shock damping ability. The monotube shock, which separates the oil and gas charge. The advantage here is we're gonna have more control we're going to be able to use more shock in less size. It's a little more expensive, but the tires are going to be on the ground more often, and we're going to get some stability in turning. Then we've got our reservoir shock, just like the mono tube, except we've got more room for more stuff. Runs cooler, lasts longer. And again, this is Scott at Axelboy, and thanks for joining me for a little bit of shock talk. <laughs>